Hey there, everybody. Jason here with another movie review. Today, I'll be talking about Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse, the much-anticipated sequel to the 2018 animated feature Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. But before I get started, as per usual, I will be talking spoilers. So if you haven't seen this movie yet, stop the video, go check it out, and come on back, and we can talk about it. But now that we're past the spoiler warning, let's dive in, shall we? Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse easily became my favorite Spider-Man movie of all time back in 2018. Even after Spider-Man No Way Home came out in 2021, I still heavily favored Into the Spider-Verse for its unique visuals, stellar cast, and incredibly moving and fun story. So when a sequel was announced a few years later, I was both excited and a bit apprehensive. I was afraid that it was going to fall into the sophomore slump, that sequels normally do. Well, we did it. We won some awards from this. It was an amazing movie. Let's just do the same thing and hope that nobody notices. But not so with Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse. When I finally saw it a few days ago, I was just blown away. How they took everything that was great and unique about the first movie and just cranked it up to an 11. The art styles are just gorgeous. I mean, this is the most beautiful film I've ever seen. I did not think that what they did in Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse could get any better. I was wrong. I was wrong. Especially the scenes with Gwen Stacy and her father, the way they shifted color palettes repeatedly throughout those scenes. It adds a lot to the emotional resonance of the scene and just really, really brings them to a whole nother level that I don't think any other film has ever done. It's just incredible. And the differing art styles really, really, really come together, especially when all the Spider-Men come together in that interdimensional hub. It's just, it's just so cool. The performances are just top notch, this movie. Haley Steinfeld and Shameik Moore really really shine this time especially Haley Steinfeld I feel like this was more of Gwen Stacy's movie than it was Miles Morales's movie although Miles Morales is still at the center because this is his franchise they gave Gwen more time to shine in this movie and both actors really bring their A game to these characters this time around not that they didn't in the last movie but they brought a lot more to these characters than they did in the previous film and it's just it's just amazing oscar isaac is really menacing as miguel o'hara and kind of poses some interesting questions about what it is to be a spider-man and one other key standout to this movie was of course jason schwartzman as the spot the Spot has always been kind of one of those villains that's sort of been a punchline just based on his name, his look, and at times his superpowers. And what I liked about how he was handled in this film is they don't try to fight it. They more so lean into it. He's the butt of the joke. He's a laughing stock. Even he himself isn't really confident as a supervillain. And Jason Schwartzman really, really does well to play that up in his earlier scenes. But when his plan comes together and when he becomes much more of a menace than earlier in the movie, he also brings that to the performance too. It becomes more serious. It becomes scary even. And I thought that was brilliant. I loved it. The story of this movie is really moving as well. It has some really, really great moments, especially between Gwen and her father and Miguel and his parents, specifically his mom. I think it built on what came before it in Into the Spider-Verse so well this time around. And it added for a much more weighted and emotional story than the previous film. Now, as anyone will tell you, this film does end on quite of a cliffhanger. People who weren't expecting it were kind of like, what? But 
when this movie was originally announced, it was announced as part one of part two. It wasn't until shortly after production that they decided to change the title to Across the Spider-Verse with part two being Beyond the Spider-Verse. I think it does well to not only tee itself up for an epic finale in Beyond the Spider-Verse, but it does kind of close the loop of one key storyline in this film, and that is, of course, the one between Gwen and her father. And it does it in quite a satisfying way and also gives her character something to fight for, to, to continue on in the next movie. And I thought that was, that was quite powerful. In my final analysis... Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse was an excellent movie. It took everything that was great about Into the Spider-Verse and just pushed it even further. It's breakneck speed. It's amazing visuals. And it's stellar performances really, really carry and drive this movie. Yes, the story does end on quite a massive cliffhanger, but there's a satisfying enough conclusion and you can appreciate everything that you watched that it doesn't so much leave you disappointed as it does amped up and anticipating what you're going to see next as a result i'm going to go ahead and give across the spider-verse an obvious five out of five this movie was amazing i could not recommend it more but that is just my opinion let me know what you thought of spider-man across the spider-verse down in the comments what parts did you really enjoy what really stood out to you did you like it more than into the spider-verse i want to hear your thoughts down in the comments if you enjoyed the video don't forget to click that like button if you want to see more videos don't forget to subscribe. You can click that notification bell so you can get updates on future videos. You can also follow my social media pages. Links are down in the description of this video. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it, and I will see you on the next one. Bye.